This conference will now be recorded.
Uh, hi, morning. Welcome to Career AD. Please wait for a couple of minutes to start the demo. Still, people are connecting, so please wait a few minutes. Thank you. everyone very good morning just tell me if you can hear me so i'm audible and you can hear me loud and clear and you can, you can see my screen also ah uh, yes we can see your screen and we can we can hear you, you can see uh, audible now thanks a lot uh, so i am sandeep uh, i mean been working as a devops engineer in uh, like it firm so i been i got 11 years of experience in complete devops and I've been using AWS uh, since past eight years and all my infrastructure and complete automations and everything is being done on the AWS. Like even in the current form that I'm uh, completely onto the AWS and we have all of our uh, infrastructure being hosted in the AWS itself. Uh, so uh, coming to the uh, like uh, today's demo, it would be around uh, generally what is AWS and uh, what kind of services are in the AWS how we do use uh, these uh, different AWS services and the cloud computing uh, in our regular infrastructure and automation and what is the use of different services in the AWS. I think so you already had a bit background on what is a cloud and you could be been using the cloud in various of your day-to-day uh, -day activities. It could be like your applications are already hosted on the cloud and uh, your infrastructure is built in the cloud. It could be a, anything like it could be a Azure or uh, AWS or GCP or anything. Uh, maybe like it's not a new thing to you, at least the terminology of the cloud, like why we need to go into the cloud and all that. Uh, so basically uh, we have a very uh, normal, like what is a cloud computing? So generally it's an on-demand IT delivery of the 
resources over the internet if you see this is the main thing it's an on-demand delivery where you uh, take the services as required and you only pay as you go like uh, in the normal traditional approach if you want to build any website you need a complete data center and where you need to manage all the things like you need to uh, create the, uh, you need to uh, uh, you mean in, install the operating systems on onto a virtual missions and uh, sorry on onto an any typical hardware and you create virtual missions out of it and there you need to install your applications and you need to manage all the things and it generally takes a lot of time uh, for you to go into the business if you go into that kind of approach because you don't know the demands of the market and once you're trying to uh, once you get all the things done on the infrastructure on the regular data centers it would take even months or more than that to get the complete picture on that so the cloud is something which gives you a capability of just take the services which you need uh, you create your uh, infrastructure which is required put your application and run and you pay as you go it's a kind of uh, we can think of as an electricity bill like only the kind of utilization that you do you generate a bill according to that it's not something like uh, if you don't use it you get a bill uh, you, you get a billing kind of thing so this is a major advantage in the cloud so if i have a let's suppose i have an i, I have an idea so i want to take that idea and build an application around that so in the cloud it's it's only a matter of a few days to build the complete infrastructure and build my application onto the uh, uh, deploy my application into the cloud and go into the market i did i did not care about these details of maintaining the infrastructure and all these things so we have a very different approaches in the cloud where we can use a kind of serverless model and we can do a normal uh, regular infrastructure as a sorry in, a infrastructure we can take or you can take a completely platform as a service kind of thing so there are different kind of models in the cloud which helps us a lot and if you see uh, you don't buy or own anything in the cloud it's like a normal in the physical center physical data centers you need to buy the uh, data center like you need to buy the uh, ibm servers or any kind of servers where you need to maintain things on that like installing the uh, linux os or any any particular servers that you want like if it is an apache or tomcat or something but in the cloud it's not like that you just uh, uh, you you just take it you maintain it and you if you want you can destroy it only you you only pay for what it is it's a kind even the uh, virtual missions are also a kind of service you don't own any kind of hardware in the cloud and you access all these things via internet like everything if you if you look into this particular uh, diagram so you have these applications which are uh, maybe running on the cloud and you all the end users like the laptops or desktops or anything will be just utilizing all these kind of utilities and services but you generally don't own any hardware or something like that you just use them and once you're out uh, that's it you pay for that and you come out and you can divide the applications in the like generally applications uh, like this like you have the applications hosted on the cloud or you have the platforms hosted on the cloud let's suppose uh, uh, you have a website and you need a database so you can just go to the cloud and create a database and it will be there for you it, uh, you just use it and you pay for according only to the database and this database here will be completely managed by the cloud I'll tell you what is uh, managed by cloud uh, what managed by AWS or what, what it sends me and you can also have the infrastructure in the cloud like you can create a VMs or load balancers or uh, networking components and all these things and everything is encapsulated to you you need not get into details of uh, uh, in depth details of the how the VPC is there and what kind of switch they are using or what kind of uh, hub they are using and all those things you just want a private network you just create it with whatever the IP address stack that you want and it will be ready for you and again we are only discussing AWS is uh, right now it's a kind of leader in the market if you look into the Azure or GCP uh, the market share is more for an AWS even if you see the trends also AWS is highly implemented like many of the organizations are already uh, moved to the AWS and having their all workloads running on the AWS and using the services over the AWS and even if you see the market very latest one market share also it's it's occupying around 32 percent and it could be more than that also uh, and the implementation is heavily done around the AWS because of the feature rich that it has and the kind of uh, a new kind of services that are being added to the AWS it's always good to see that moving your complete infrastructure and the applications to the AWS is having a huge advantage in the business market
AWS entered into the uh, like cloud computing like in 2006 and uh, from there they started building their own uh, infrastructure services and they give these things over the uh, internet that we that's the reason we call it as a web services as a cloud computing this is uh, how the console looks on the first place uh, it has many services if you can see uh, the compute like it will be divided in this way the compute based services uh, the containers the storage databases and all this uh, in this demo, it's not a uh, like I can't go into each of these. What is EC2 or what is uh, ECR or these things because this is uh, this is what we learn in the course. But you can just have a glance of how it exactly looks like, how the dashboard looks like. This is what the generally AWS management console looks like. Uh, we can create a free account uh, like uh, uh, because that again comes with certain conditions and all that. But you can easily learn using the free account in the AWS. And it's like uh, I, I again told you it's a very low cost as you pay uh, like you use a service You only pay for that if you stop the service you won't pay for that as a kind of electricity when you turn on something uh, Which an appliance which uses the power then you pay according to the uh, units And if you don't do it, uh, you, there is no units charged and something like that and this is highly uh, Scalable all the services in the AWS are will be scaled up as your workloads goes on increasing and all that and the AWS has a, a huge advantage over the uh, other clouds also because the kind of uh, regions the uh, data centers that the Amazon has is very wide. Like you can see around 25 uh, regions are there. Like the regions are based on like you can just see uh, infrastructure AWS where you can see the different regions. So we call these as a regions. Like for example, you have in the Mumbai, they have the data center hosted in the Mumbai and uh, there is a region in the Mumbai. So once you are trying to deploy all your infrastructure, you can choose a region. So you can come here and you can choose a region and you can deploy all your infrastructure in the particular region. So it's a very, a very good advantage that to have multiple regions so that your content will be close to the uh, like if it is a web application or let's suppose it's a, a video streaming like Netflix. It could to have on multiple regions so that it can serve the content very good to the end users. And there is something called edge locations also in AWS, like uh, which is uh, uh, which gives a content delivery network. For example, if you are viewing the Netflix, uh, you need the content pertaining to the India, like uh, there will be licensing and all those things, right? So they can have an edge location uh, which is there in India, and they can host their complete Netflix there, uh, which comes for, for you from there itself. So it doesn't hit the servers which is there in the uh, North uh, North America or US or anywhere. So that is a support of edge location that the AWS has. We'll deal with more about the edge locations and how you can make this uh, edge locations in the AWS, all these things later. But that is about the. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any doubt, you can just ask me. So that is about the regions uh, that the AWS has, which are hosted the data centers in different. Uh, uh, regions and they also have something called availability zones. So in each region again, uh, it will be divided in a kind of uh, availability zone. So you can think something like this. So it could be a regions and you have the availability zones where the data centers will be hosted. And uh, this could be in the Mumbai, there could be a three availability regions and three availability zones, which will be very far, even if some data center goes down due to any floods or anything the other two data like data centers will be serving the application and again uh, coming into the details of the cloud like uh, generally the cloud is being divided into something called uh, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service and software as a service so based on these uh, like any cloud you can tell like these are the paradigms that are there in the cloud uh, so software as a service is something like you can think it of uh, google drive so Google Drive is a kind of storage solution where you generally uh, store every uh, your your pics and your builds or anything like any files or data and anything in the Google Drive and uh, it, it you don't care literally where it is hosted or how it is hosted whether it runs on any database or how the external storage maintained with it Google Drive and all these things you just use that application even if it is matter of a, a Gmail also you just use the email application that comes from the Gmail, but you don't care about uh, how the mail servers are hosted and how the uh, different protocols in the networking happens. It's called a software as service. As an end user, you just use it. So you can think of examples like uh, virtual desktops or emails or something like that. And you also have something called platform as a service. 
so in the platform as a service uh, it's like uh, you uh, you only uh, access one particular service like let's suppose if it is a database you can go to any of the cloud you can create the database in the cloud and uh, that's it you can just use a database for your application and the the advantage over here is uh, the complete database will be maintained by the cloud like the backups for the database if the database goes down how like how do you retain that all the data and uh, if you want the database to be there in multiple locations so that it can serve as high availability like uh, the database never goes down all this can be taken care of by the cloud itself that's the reason we call it as uh, platform as a service and uh, you only care about the uh, applications like all the other ones like uh, databases or like if you want to manage the users let's suppose you are building a website like facebook and your uh, people will be subscribing to the uh, facebook or any social media site and you need to manage the users and that is a high challenging part then the cloud will have a different kind of service where you can just manage the users you need not uh, literally manage the users with any ad or any kind of service so that is an advantage of a platform as a service like database or a web server any development tools also you can use it and finally infrastructure as a service this is a very thing like when generally all the devops people will literally know how they manage the infrastructure and all this and like creating the virtual missions and all that so here you need you need not own any hardware you just create any number of virtual missions and you put your application running on that so this is a kind of scenarios where different kind of services we have in the cloud uh, we typically divide into software as service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service and now that is about aws and that is about the infrastructure that aws has and uh, different services that it has and this is the region and if you just come down here uh, these are all the services that we have seen from the aws dashboard also like if you come here uh, all the services are being divided into the compute where you can see uh, different services related to the compute and containers storage uh, database services and you can see the machine learning and analytics and all this it's not uh, something that if you are learning the AWS cloud, it's not that you go to each and every service and you try to master the service Generally, uh, you need only few things like if you see the uh, for, for managing any cloud There are certain things called fundamentals like every other service will rely on these things so for example the compute is very important to uh, where, where we run the virtual missions and all these things and uh, the storage is very important where for creating the basic applications also you need to have an external storage and all these things and a database or something like that so our course will be uh, literally looking into that and we'll learn about what exactly needed for the aws uh, at least uh, so uh, there are already these services before the cloud computing why it is in the trend now because the cloud gives us the better way in handling all these services as I told you, the platform as a service is something, a database. I can just go here and create a database. And it's it's a matter of uh, a small, like 10 minutes where I can just up the database and connect to my uh, website. And before that, uh, it would be, again, I need to go to any kind of vendor and take this as, because they need to maintain all the backups and everything. So the cloud has been giving all these uh, different services very easily accessible and all these things. So that's the reason uh, they're, more into the trend now or like uh, that is that's the main answer okay and uh, coming back here yeah so this like it's not that you need to learn each and every service in this there are some fundamentals of all the aws services that you need to go with that and if you look into any of the uh, like uh, devops certification or a uh, system architecture certification or any application support uh, application certification in AWS you'll see only the services that are being required as a fundamental for any cloud like building any application in the cloud you need a certain services so those are the ones that we uh, learn in this course and go ahead in that way and let me just show you uh, I can't go into each and every service and tell you what is particular service and all that but I can show you some kind of scenario where we can uh, if there is no cloud uh, where how do we build a normal application and how do we build the same application using a uh, AWS so let's suppose uh, we are building a website called a Facebook uh, like a simple social networking uh, sorry, uh, social media website and where we need a different kind of uh, uh, like uh, different kind of uh, components in the social media application like web application 
So if you see, this is how uh, it looks like uh, a normal web application. You'll have a network here. You'll have a web server running. You'll have a uh, application server running. So the web server is what it serves the uh, main Facebook.com, and application server is where the all the business logic sits uh, to handle the different things in the uh, in the website. And now you also need to have a relational database. Unless until you have a database, you can't serve the website, right? So a small website uh, should start something like this. Some users will be from the outside. They try to access the website which is running on the web server. And you also have a, uh, a DNS like uh, Facebook.com so that they can connect to the web server and uh, like look into all the uh, like they can create their own user and all that. So a small website would have these things like it would be a private network uh, so that uh, only the public uh, public facing AD load balancer or something will be outside so that you can access that and it hits into the web server something like this so now you need to like let's suppose this is your website facebook.com now it slowly grows like people more and more users will be adding to this website and you need to uh, slowly do a scaling kind of thing so you can do a two kind of scalings one is a vertical scaling or one is a horizontal scaling so if you see this is a vertical scaling like where you increase the uh, ram and where you increase the memory sorry the memory is ram itself where you increase the uh, compute power via cpus like uh, initially you go with the uh, 4 gigs of ram and slowly when the load is increasing you can go with the 16 gigs of ram uh, 16 gigs of memory something like this and or you can do a horizontal scaling where you add multiple instances serving the same thing so you can have uh, like uh, where you add more and more virtual machines which would be serving the same content uh, which is there in the web so it looks like something like this. So now you have uh, more and more VMs. That's a vertical horizontal scaling that you are doing, adding more and more VM instances. And you also have a disk where you store the, the content of that particular web server and also the app servers also will be having a disk. And again, it will be connected to a, any relational database. So now you can you need something in the between where you can uh, like you can route the traffic like one request coming. It should come here second request coming it should come to this particular uh, stack so now it will be like this so now you introduce a new component called load balancer where the users start hitting the load balancer first then the load is divided into this vm and this vm and from where again they'll be connected to a relational database now let's suppose the data is gro growing like you have you are having more and more data and you need to also maintain certain user information and all these things uh, and you also need to introduce a dns part here that is a facebook.com then you are uh, you just introduce a facebook.com a dns another component let's see first component is a web service web server second one is the app server third is a relational database next comes the load balancer it comes a dns like you are being introducing the new and new components as your website is growing now you are also introduced to a uh, like a, a NoSQL a database which handles a, a better way of the user information and all this like uh, it's not only the relational database that you need as you as things are growing you need a scaling database like the database also need to be scaled how the VMs are being scaled. So for that uh, NoSQL is the best approach and you can also add something called a DB cache. Let's suppose you need a faster read process here like any website you are you need to have the more and more uh, uh, read and everything and you maintain a DB cache. It could be a memcached or Redis or anything and this is how it looks like and now suppose uh, any uh, like if you see the Facebook you've been adding the images and media videos and all this content you can't store everything on these disks. It will be growing more and more and uh, it will be filling and even application goes down if just uh, disk is going if, if it is get it's get filled now you need to introduce a new concept called external storage so what it happens is uh, now the web server will be connecting to the external storage and it will serve all the images and videos for you like this so a normal architecture looks like this if you don't have any uh, a cloud or something then how do you do that like, like for load balancer you need to have nginx where you need to maintain all the things or a HA proxy or something for a DNS you need to install again the DNS server when you need to maintain all the records and everything and for all the VMs again you need to uh, install a, a you need to take a server and you need to install the OS on that you need to install the VMs and all that so it looks like this and you need to maintain each and every component in this and next let's see like you need a you need a content filter let's suppose uh, 
this content filter is something which will filter out all the images so that uh, there will be certain policies only these images should be there and these videos should be there right you need to filter all those things so you introduce another component called a content filter and 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 the facebook also tries to give a kind of ads which is a completely user targeted based on your search and everything they want to give you certain ads and everything so for that uh, they introduce a uh, we can introduce another thing called clickstream analysis so which does all these ads and everything for us and next uh, going like uh, there is also you need also a storage for the clickstream analysis where you can store all the details of it and and after that you need to also uh, uh, anal you need to analyze what is happening and everything for that there could be a hadoop uh, which is a uh, where it where it does all the analytics and data analytics you need to have the data warehouse and uh, another new concept you can add as a business intelligence which does uh, based on your uh, uh, clicks and based on your usage it can target the ads and all these things so this is a kind of intelligence goes behind that maybe this is completely we don't know these things as a back end but this is how it looks like uh, where you have the images stored here and the video stored here and where the application related databases are running here where you have all the kind of uh, click streams and everything happening here and now uh, end user literally doesn't know all these things uh, only we look into the browser and look the facebook or if from the mobile you look the facebook nothing more than that now further again you introduce something new like uh, further all the browser people will be hitting the, to the external storage like this for all the mobile users they'll be hitting the external storage like this because uh, uh, format of the videos would be different right uh, like you need to uh, like you need to convert the videos which will be better suited for the mobile users and the videos and images and everything will be different which will be suited for the web users so now these uh, two components are being introduced into the architecture this looks like this and now uh, as i told you you have something called uh, uh, edge locations in the aws if you remember we have just seen that right uh, in this we have that edge location where the content will be served uh, to the people according to the location like if i'm from the india if i go to the amazon website it will be served from the uh, location which is very near to me which would reduce the latency and which would also contain give the content which is required for me so this is something we introduce here it's called a content delivery network it's a cache where uh, like uh, it, it will be only very near to the location and it will serve the uh, content in that way this is one of the another one and again you get a push notifications if someone posts something and all these things right uh, that is how you get a push notifications and uh, if someone posts something and you will also get emails if you require like if someone posts something and for all this infrastructure uh, uh, you also need a chatting feature also like uh, where you'll also chat with the friends and all that and that can be also introduced in a kind of messaging queue like where this happens over the like you can chat with your friends and all this to be monitored for example if this vm goes down i don't know or if this particular data warehouse goes down then it will be a problem so for all these things uh, i need a monitoring dashboard so this is normal a typical uh, social media website how it looks like and we just discussed the different components that gets into this and if you want to achieve these things within on premise if it is not a cloud then it would be very very difficult where you need to manage each and everything you need to have a system admin you need to have the operation guys uh, many operation guys and you need to build everything from the data center and it will be very impossible for you to build all these things on a regular uh, because this is only the some parts i'm showing if you go to the facebook or a twitter or a netflix the kind of architectures will be very very complex where they need to introduce more and more things like even these days we have got a container containerized uh, architecture microservice architecture where you have the container running so it would be a very difficult task if uh, if there is no cloud or something like this now let's see what different aws like we have seen these many aws services right which is very confusing on the first go like we can see what aws service fits into these kind of approach that we have like this website if i want to completely build in the aws how different services i can use it now the first would be the network part in the aws we have something called vpc like if you just come here and you, you see something called a vpc where you can create a virtual private network and uh, and this private network will have subnets and private subnets and public subnets where you can host the applications onto the different subnets so uh, if you just see 
so normal aws network it looks like this so it exactly looks like this where you have a public subnet where you have, where you have a public subnet a private subnet where you can host your applications on both this. and this is a vpc which is a completely isolated network for you and every account in the aws will come with the vpc and you can create any number of vpcs also so now uh, that is about the networking part that is a vpc and you can have in the multiple availability zones also i told about regions and zones right uh, like you can have in multiple availability zones also like achieving the high availability kind of thing for your website so now let's replace the network with the aws vpc so this is how it looks like this complete social media website the facebook will be uh, hosted on the VPC it's, it exactly uh, we can draw something like this and a good uh, architecture of the AWS would be uh, like if you see this is how we need to uh, picture the things but here it's uh, like this for our usability and now if you see we can replace the VMs uh, so let's replace the VMs with the EC2 now if you come to this service the first thing that we discuss is a compute here we have the EC2 which will give us the VMs and in the EC2 we have something called EBS which gives us the block storage like we have we here we have the disk right now the disk is being replaced with the uh, EBS I can just take a snapshot for our use case so this is how uh, uh, like we are replacing the disk and VM here so the EC2 is being replaced with the VM and EBS is replaced with the disk now let's try to replace the other components now we have the load balancer and we have been uh, we have already introduced something called scaling so we discussed the horizontal scaling or vertical scaling right so in aws we have something called auto scaling uh, which is a completely we can do a scale out and scale in based on the like uh, you can schedule it or you can do the scaling as per the capacity let's suppose you can write a scaling policy like if my compute is uh, like uh, more than 50 percent like if the cpu is more than 50 percent like uh, spin up three new instances so the aws take care of that and it will spin up the new ec2 instances based on that rule or if the memory is being throttled you can just spin up the ec2 instances based on that so all these kind of scaling policies you can uh, you can go with the demand if there is more and more demand you can add go on adding the ec2 instances if there is no demand you can again uh, scale in like reducing the ec2 instances and all these things so this is managed by something called auto scaling and this is a feature that aws comes up with the uh, auto scaling group we call it as so in this auto scaling groups we manage everything that and here the load balancing or load balancer also should be a kind of scalable let's suppose in the first week you just launched a website and only 100 users are being using it now it goes into thousands and millions and all that and your web, web load balancer also should be scalable to handle those many requests so in a regular scenario in a regular approach it would be very difficult for us to build a load you need to also scale the load balancer if you are installing the nginx or ha proxy here that is a famous load balancer and uh, you need to also scale them but the aws in the cloud it gives a, a like uh, you have something called uh, alb application load balancer or a normal load balancer in aws which take care of all that part and you can also replace the components like this now you have a db uh, no sql database like the cassandra or mongodb and you also need to have a db cache now you can replace all these things uh, with something called elastic cache uh, it runs with the both the redis and memcached engines and this uh, no sql we can replace with the mongodb like dynamodb which are very very famous uh, uh, db a no sql db we'll also look into that in this course for the basic applications and this rds so here all these things will be completely managed by the aws they will take care about the maintenance or like upgrading minor upgrades major upgrades and you can have the read replicas you can have the uh, like a distributed RDS like uh, your application can like all these RDS can be running in different regions and high availability and all these things can be easily achieved and it's scalable like uh, the RDS can be increased uh, like uh, it can it can be done as a vertical scaling like you can add more and more storage and all these things uh, for the RDS also and uh, like this is how it looks like uh, like normal elastic load balancer we have this load balancer here and where we uh, send the traffic to these multiple ec2 instances which are there which may be running in different zones also so if this complete stack goes down this will be serving the content and all that and now uh, the, uh, regarding the dns there is a service called root 53 
that handles all the DNS. So if you come here again, you have in the networking, if you see, you have something called root file where you can add the domains. Like if you can register a new domains, you can add the roots and everything. So that is what uh, we introduce another component here. We remove the regular uh, uh, DNS. There is a, any, any kind of DNS bind server or something and we can replace with the root file. Now it looks like this. Now we have replaced the DNS, a load balancer, VMs, and this particular part is completely done. So with this, you can have a normal website, a very, a very regular website that you want to have. You can just have it. And if you are going with the other services also, it looks like this. Like if uh, for the external storage in AWS, there is something called S3. So if you go here, uh, we have uh, complete storage part where in this course we'll deal with S3. How do you uh, create the, we, there is something called buckets concept in the S3. And how do I, it's an object store model. So how do we do all that? Uh, we'll discuss later. But for now, that external storage will be the S3 here. And uh, the content filter, uh, the one that we need here, which would, uh, which would filter all the images and the content and everything. Like if you see, this is the one here. And we have in the AWS something called recognition, like uh, which would filter everything out and which will, uh, where you can store the videos and everything in this particular S3. And this S3 is again highly scalable. Uh, you can store any amount of data and uh, and like it, it can be like the petabytes also it's there is no limit of amount of storage that you can do on the s3 and now for the video converter like you need a uh, conversion from the normal videos to the videos that you can view on the mobile right so for this uh, like for this component we can introduce something called lambda here so the lambda is a kind of serverless concept in the aws like it's a function as a service kind of thing till now we have seen something called uh, software as a service infrastructure as a service right recently you you have heard of a concept called serverless and all this where you don't manage the servers you just give your code and things run on fly so that is a similar example is a lambda where uh, you can have the lambda here also like yeah, i can show you from here but uh, this is a service which is a completely serverless and which will also watch if a new content is added let's suppose someone is added a new content and it will watch for the content and it will also completely convert the content into a different kind of format so that uh, mobile applications can have uh, use it and uh, this is how the uh, this one will be there and for this and for this part the clickstream analysis uh, storage and uh, all this uh, running a distributed jobs in the hadoop cluster and all these things in the aws we have this one like we call it as a census again you introduce the s3 like you have the storage here right you introduce s3 here we have an emr and EMR is completely related to the Hadoop cluster and it handles all the cluster and everything. And here you also have something for the ETL, like uh, if there is any any kind of, uh, if what, what friends are doing, what they are pushing onto the wall and everything that can be happened or the ETL jobs, we call it as, we have something called a clue here. And for the data warehouse and business intelligence, uh, we have a Redshift and Athena. So all these things work uh, hand to hand, like we can just create these services from here like uh, you can see these things like this is athena this is a redshift and you can just uh, come here and create the redshift and you can integrate with the current application that is, that you are already having here so we have pretty much uh, changed all the things we have changed the this part which is a normal website and going to the complex architectures like these things uh, you have all these in this course we don't uh, literally look into the redshift athena or emr all these things we only go with the very required components that is this part and s3 and lambda and uh, all these things and we will we'll come to this particular section now now uh, if you see we also need to have something called content delivery cache uh, that we have been seeing and now that's being introduced something called with the edge locations like i've shown you about the edge locations and regions right now you can see in the real time how we use these edge locations Let's suppose a browse like a, if I'm opening my Facebook from my uh, Hyderabad, then I'll be hitting the new uh, nearby edge location, which is there. And that is being served for the cloud front and you will have this cloud front and everything here. Uh, like you can just search for the particular application where it is being uh, filtered out. Uh, this one and let's come to this part like for all the you can observe again this one for all the SMS and uh, mobile push notifications and everything we have a service called simple notification service in aws and for the email uh, email and messaging queue also we have something called scs a simple email service and for chatting and all these things we have a queue which is a rabbit queue a kind of thing 
an SQS, a simple queue service in the AWS. And for monitoring all this infrastructure, if something goes down, I need to know, or if this EC2 instance is uh, hitting around 90% uh, of the capacity because the application goes down, right? Then I can monitor everything. Infrastructure I can monitor and also the applications which are running on that. Let's suppose the app server is a Tomcat or a web logic or something. I can monitor that and if if a web server is an Apache or any HTTP server also I can monitor it so I do have a monitoring dashboard uh, which is called CloudWatch which I will I'll look into uh, monitoring of all this I can pull the metrics out of it and I can take the decisions based on that I, and I can also give the auto scaling I can also uh, create an auto scaling group based on that particular metrics. Let's suppose my website is always hitting 90% and only uh, I just added a scaling part of three instances to handle the traffic. Now I can take a decision of adding more and more instances and all these things are can be done uh, with uh, very small changes itself and uh, we'll also learn about the cloud watch metrics SQS SNS and everything and uh, I'll try to tell all the AWS uh, for example once I teach you about the compute part I'll come up a kind of architecture something like this where you can use in a real time uh, and if I teach about a containers and all this then I'll come up with a, any application where it completely has a microservices architecture and where we can view the things in this way because it gives us a main uh, understanding of how different resources are integrated in any cloud uh, that's a way that I have take, take this take in this particular approach here and uh, in AWS you also have the security services like you can manage all the uh, users like for example right now there is a cloud user here if I want to add more and users like uh, my particular organization will, will be having a developers QA and a different kind of people right so I can manage all these uh, users and what applications they can have access like for example I don't want the developer to just go here and he, he can't just create a some kind of machine learning if he's just learning and there is there will be a lot of building for this so for that I can restrict his kind of access to only certain services and all that so I can do that from the IAM perspective there is a service called IAM where I can add the users policies roles and I can attach the uh, roles to the different thing so let's suppose EC2 instance want to uh, connect to the S3 bucket uh, so that the video can be rendered here so for that also I need to have a permission so from the IAM perspective and you can also have something called encryption like all my data should be encrypted in the EBS volume that we have seen here like the disk is there right so you have a disk and where you want to encrypt all the data then you have something called KMS which does all the encryption on S3 buckets or uh, EBS uh, volumes or any even in the database also all the content can be encrypted and we also have a kind of certificates like if you see if you access any website you have some kind of SSL certificate here right so for that uh, like uh, generally you'll have it uh, like if you can see any website for that so for that you can have something called uh, ACM where it serves the certificates and all that so this is completely a security kind of uh, perspective of the AWS what kind of services are there in the AWS we have something called WAF which is a kind of firewall uh, which can also the filter the things and we also have something called inspector but in this course I'll discuss about IA KMS ACM this is all very uh, primary ones and a very important in the kind of uh, security kind of services and finally coming to something called uh, infrastructure as a code uh, code and these days you have been hearing something called Terraform uh, the, how do you write complete infrastructure as a code like let's suppose I want to build all these things like a kind of code so if on the single click in 30 minutes I want this complete architecture to be running like this complete services to be running and the website should be up so for that we use something called cloud formation uh, where we write in its normal JSON or YAML itself it's not a, it's a different uh, programming or something like that uh, we'll, I'll also teach you how do you write a simple uh, cloud formation templates for creating we'll go with the very basics like creating the EC2 instances and adding the load balancers and auto scale groups and everything so with this with this cloud formation I can create this complete stack in 30 minutes and this is very important like if you look into any of the uh, right now you write complete infrastructure as a code like Terraform and all these things uh, uh, Terraform and all these things uh, and uh, and and you because we need these things like if you want to create multiple stacks let's suppose 
development also want these things like development has a aws account they also wants to have this kind of similar setup so that the things will be very rapid and bugs can be easily catched and uh, development like we we implement something called devops strategies and devops process like we have the agile methodology in place where we need to have the same kind of replicas in every environment dev should be using the same as prod uh, and uat should be using the same kind of infrastructure and everything so for that if you have a cloud formation template on the single click you can create any number of uh, stacks that you want you can call one stack as a dev stack you can call one as a qa and you can give it to the qa guys who will be uh, doing all the testing on that so for that the infrastructure as a code is very important and even if the, uh, you can uh, you write everything as a code you write in everything as a json format if you want to change the uh, if you want to introduce a new service into this let's suppose you want to introduce a microservice service you again write as a cloud formation template so it can be easily deployed and provisioning also will be very very easy using a cloud formation templates so in this aws course we'll be dealing with the cloud formation also so we'll have that in this particular management i think so uh, you can just search for any service like this if you don't know where to find it you can just come to here and if you just see you have the cloud formation where you can manage and uh, resources with the templates you create a template for each and everything uh, even if it, if it is a Tomcat template or a WebLogic template or a WordPress or anything, you can just create a template. And in that template, you can specify what kind of resources that you can have. Right now, in our, in our uh, scenario, we are having all these kind of services. We want EC2, we want Elastic Cache, RDS, and S3, and all these things. For everything, you can write these kind of things. And now, there is also something called CICD. Like, uh, if you see, uh, right now, we have these agile methodology being implemented in everywhere like we need to have the cicd uh, like which is a continuous integration and a continuous delivery like if you see the developers or a devops or anyone will have a code like even for this cloud formation also i'll have my code in a kind of uh, git repository so where you will have every code in the git repositories right that is called a code commit so developers or any people will be submitting their code to the code commit that is from this section so in this course, we'll also go with the code commit and all these developers section. So, yeah, this one, the developer tools is something called code commit, code build, code pipeline and all these things. So where uh, the developers will push the code to the Git repositories. And once the code is pushed into the Git repositories, you have the pipeline which builds the build artifacts and which will store the build artifact somewhere. And it can also deploy into any of the uh, stack you have if you want to push the build artifact to the dev stack it will do it if it if you want to pull it to the production also you can just push the into the production and you have a code pipeline which does all these things so these services are already in the aws we will also look into this uh, with the basic applications and how do you uh, do that as a cloud architects where do you fit into the devops yeah like uh, any devops also requires a bit background of the cloud architect because i am a devops engineer and i want to generally uh, architect my infrastructure how it looks like whether i want to choose let's suppose you have the microservice architecture and uh, all your developers being building all the applications in the kind of docker containers now you want to choose whether you want to go to what kind of service in the containerization now if you come to the containers here you have something called uh, uh, elastic container service and elastic kubernetes service so you need to have a kind of view of uh, even the cloud architecture how which kind of service you need to choose you will you, always we do a poc that's not, not an issue like we take up a poc where we look into the options of what elastic container service is giving or what a kubernetes service is giving and based on that we'll take the decisions so and uh, basically a devops engineer should be able to understand uh, the vpc part and they should be able to understand how the networking happens like what is a subnet and all these things so that's the reason this course will also cover these things we'll come to the uh, networking part like uh, how do you create a basic vpc and basic networks and how do you create the ec2 instances all these things will be connected like slowly the course will be moving into a kind of the complex one basically you'll uh, on the first line first few weeks you'll be learning about the compute storage database uh, networking part and slowly we'll be moving into the cloud formations where you create uh, these things using the code and after that you will come into the uh, these things like uh, like in the later stages you'll come into the code commit code build because you need to integrate the CICD part also into the cloud like if you're learning the AWS you need to learn these things also
and uh, coming to this part like uh, when when you talk about microservices if you see yes, right Sandeep now, Sandeep is... Sandeep. yeah uh, hello everyone uh, this is lakshmi from career ready the regular sessions of this batch will be starting from monday ist onwards for you for usa people it falls on sunday evening and the timings would be from 7 to 8 am ist uh, for more details you can reach us on the numbers whatever i have provided in chart thank you yeah you can carry on sunday thanks. thanks yeah so now these days if you see all the things are building around the cloud native applications if you see that everyone will be talking about the cloud native cloud editions they want to uh, set up all these applications and everything in the cloud and we have been seeing the complete uh, um, uh, transition towards the microservice architecture we have been learning about uh, docker containers containers all the applications are being containerized whether it is a spring boot or the tomcat or anything so for this aws provides you uh, like the two services one is ecs one is eks these are very much uh, highly implemented these days like even in, a, in my current organization everything is moving towards the containerization you already know the benefits of the containerization and isolation microservices kind of deployments that it happens over the microservices and all that so uh, and and i'll also go with the basic things here like uh, uh, in this course i'll tell you how do you deploy a normal website which is running on an ec2 instance which is having the auto scaling groups later we'll go slowly to the containerization part also where you can deploy your containers onto a ecs or eks eks is a kind of kubernetes cluster it's a completely uh, managed by the aws where you can create the kubernetes uh, the worker the control plane is plane is completely handled by the kubernetes and you'll only have uh, aws and you'll only have the worker nodes where you can deploy your workload where you can uh, deploy your helm charts or anything which is a completely kubernetes world but here i'll show you how do you create a kubernetes cluster and how do you deploy the applications onto the kubernetes cluster also and also the ecs ecs is also one of the very famous uh, it's not a kubernetes it's a completely different thing we got a fargate kind of deployment where they handle everything we only have the docker containers we create the service part of the docker containers like how many containers should be running on the front end how many containers running for the back end how many containers should be running for the authentications and all these things right in a microservices you have authentication container and the front end the back end uh, if you look into a typical uh, amazon or a e-commerce e application you will have a container which will be serving only the cart which will be serving only the uh, front page which will be serving the uh, payment gateway so this kind of complete microservice architecture how do you handle that in the aws how do you deploy that so we'll deal with the eks and ecs for that and and we'll this is the whole thing like i came with this particular example so that you can understand how good uh, aws fits into any complex architecture and here uh, again i'm telling these are the things that we'll discuss one is ec2 and uh, and something about like containers we'll discuss about ecr ecs uh, kubernetes and in the storage we'll discuss about s3 efs uh, glacier in the database we'll discuss about rds uh, dynamo db elastic cache uh, in the networking part we'll discuss about vpc cloudfront root 53 uh, and direct connect these things in the developer tools we'll discuss about code commit code build code deploy code pipeline and uh, and the complex ones will start with cloud formation and we'll also go with the uh, logging and everything we'll go with uh, uh, what what is uh, cloud watch monitoring and everything and uh, We'll also discuss in the security IAM, uh, resource manager, cognitive, uh, and a secrets manager, and all these things. So it, it again, like if you just go to the EC2 itself, we have many things. It's not that what you see here. In the in-depth, we'll have many things. Like if you just come here, we'll have all these things. So these are all different topics again. Instances, how do you take the backups of the particular instance? And what is EBS volumes? So how do you take the backups of the EBS volumes? And the networking part, how do you uh, secure the instances? How do you secure the networking? Uh, and all these things, the load balancing and auto scaling. Uh, only this compute part will take uh, at least a week. So it, it's like that because once you understand the funders of it, like basically what is exactly the infrastructure part is, all these things will rely on these things again. All the other take up any service in the AWS, they'll be relying on the concepts that we did completely discuss in this course. So this is what uh, the complete AWS course looks like. And I think so you already got the course contents and all that. I'll be sticking to that. And uh, I'll also introduce the Terraform for you because that is widely used now. Like uh, 
along with the cloud formation i'll show you a terraform that is i'll show you how do you create all this infrastructure in this new terraform any doubt yeah hi sandeep i want to share yeah i'm shy yeah good morning yeah actually i am from testing background non support background after okay. this sections completed uh, can we make a uh, experience on aws on resume for real time experience yeah absolutely you can do it and i'm um, going complete course with a real time kind of scenarios where yeah. in the demo also i have explained you the complete real time architecture right yeah even, that's why i'm asking yeah even in the course also i'll go in on a similar lines first we'll i'll also like i just forgot one thing we'll also deal with something called serverless where we'll also deal with like, lambda dynamic lambda function, function right yeah exactly and a real time scenario i'll i'll take up a kind of example of video uh, video content how the lambda and dynamo db does everything like you need not have any managed service and everything how can your application completely go with the serverless approach yeah sandeep yeah actually i have some knowledge on the ec2 on vpc also on how to okay. create instances right yeah yeah we can can we make a like a resume i have a 1.5 years experience on testing and linux support okay so can we make a 1.5 years yeah, experience you definitely on see, like uh, all the services that we are covering will also help you in taking up any certificate mainly devops and also the uh, you can also take the uh, architect certificate like asso associate architect i think so and yeah. you can see the content yes. which uh, yeah sure yeah i also see the content what the we can see i can also see content what we have learned in that uh, course like we yeah, associate uh, architect based yeah, on that true. yeah yeah that's fine sandeep that's it that's why i'm asking how many sections this take time maybe something around yeah actually uh, we are planning around i think so it would be around one month to more than that like uh, yeah no problem yeah, yeah sure. sure thanks sandeep that's it on my end yeah hi sandeep this is shadish kumar yes sir. i would like to i would like to ask something actually you said uh, emr does not exist in this course right actually i'm big data candidate so okay. does this emr concept exist in this course it's not that uh, see if you go to the emr also and uh, like we it only relies on the kind of concepts that we discuss here like uh, in the emr if you see if you if you, j you just want to create a cluster here but the other things are again related to the kind of the ones you need to understand the networking concepts uh, other concepts like the security groups and all these things creating the emr is just one click for me here so if i i done this like you need to understand the other things like what is a ec2 pair what is a permissions like what is iam role which is related to the emr like we have discussed about iam right here so all these things are required to do that like so here you are just creating emr cluster so the cluster is ready if you see on a single click here i just created a cluster but how do you manage all the different things here and how do you write the uh, cloud formation for this that is required and what is the security here what is a ec2 instance profile and all these things so uh, all the services will be very simple on one end but if you go and manage that and if you deploy your application and the workloads on this it will be very difficult if you don't understand complete cloud so if you are more interested on the emr like you can just look into these components and we can have a uh, normal uh, small talk how does the emr fits into this but i don't literally get into the details of complete emr i only tell you about eks here for example if you want to set up the emr on the kubernetes how do you do that so that is you, you need eks and if you want to set up the emr on a regular ec2 setup you need uh, how did you do that so that is what we need in this course okay thank you fine thanks yeah this course will be completely practical like uh, i'll definitely every day i'll go here and i'll create the uh, resources for you and also i'll i'll create uh, a web application and for also the serverless ar architecture also will create another application and for the ecs and containerization part also will create some application so this will be always a real time kind of thing the kind of scenarios that i have already shown you like i'll go with a similar scenario in understanding all the core components yes someone yeah, asking. Hi. hi yeah hi sandeep 
Yeah, hi, please. Yeah, um, a, a small query like, uh, uh, do we deal with uh, with this curriculum in this curriculum like you know application migration to cloud from on premise to cloud and uh, database migrations also at least you know procedure steps. Okay, how to do? Yeah, we'll deal with that. I'll also I'll also tell you about the migration hubs and how do we do the database yeah, yeah, migration. Yeah, because. Uh, because I'm a database administrator, okay, we 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 supposed to deal you know migrations in future also. So that's the reason yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, we'll also deal with some part of the DMS, like how do we do that? Uh, only uh, I, I it's not that I, I completely show you uh, how to do in real, but at least I'll tell you a few concepts in this, uh, which deals with the database migrations. Yeah, with a practical example or practical demo, okay, for one, one or two, so that we can understand, okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Sandeep. This is Rayati. Yeah, hi, uh, Good morning. Uh, so I need to know one thing. So uh, if I'm going to take a developer associate certification, then all these services uh, which you are covering are enough, or uh, do I need to learn any other services apart from this? This is fine. Developer is uh, we are also covering a developer tools, right? The code commit and code build and all that. That is fine. That would give you the complete details of a developer course. We need not have any other things than this. Okay, thank you. Yes, Sandeep, is any coding is required for this uh, course? No, we'll only deal with only Terraform and uh, Cloud Formation, which is a normal uh, JSON YAML kind of. Yeah, things. I think yeah, JSON format, right? JSON yeah, object format. We don't, yeah. Exactly. So we don't deal in like you can create all this infrastructure with just JSON and YAML and normal Terraform uh, templates. It's not. A, okay. After this completion, of course, we can uh, ready to like uh, enable. So, so solution act exactly right enough for this yeah. course yeah yeah enough that everything like if you look into all the certifications only there will be a few things different but we'll oh, I'm, I'm covering everything like what exactly is required in the real time along with the certification yeah okay sure Sandeep. thanks Uh, Sandeep so Prem here. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, uh, are we going to develop any application sample application with the, uh, these all topics? So we yeah, are definitely. going with the practical yeah. sessions, right? Yeah. So are we going to implement all the topics in one application, like a, a sample app, sample application? Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, that is what I, I said. Like uh, initially, I'll, I'll take up three kind of applications. One would be a normal uh, EC2 where it will be running on the EC2, uh, where it uses all the auto scaling, load balancers, concepts, and all this, and it will be running the application. After that, okay. we'll also go with a serverless approach. What if we okay. don't want EC2 and completely serverless, uh, like where you can just create the websites on fly or something like that? And also, we'll go with the containerization architecture. So three kind of applications will deal with this. Okay, are we going to discuss about migrations from on on premises to cloud? Like suppose we have a, a on premises servers uh, uh, servers. Are we going to see uh, how we're going to migrate uh, from on premises to EC2? Yeah, yeah, we'll deal with that. Like that is how uh, I've been started. Like how if we have the on premise normal one, how do you migrate it to the cloud? So we'll go on those basis itself. Like for example, if you already have a data center where you have something running. So how do you completely migrate into the cloud? So we'll definitely discuss on those topics. And okay. also we'll deal with the networking part. For example, you have uh, a data center, like you have, uh, you don't want the data to be put onto the cloud. So if it is a sensitive data, you completely maintain the database in a on-premise, but all the applications sit on a, a, a cloud, AWS cloud. So how do you connect all these things also we'll discuss. So there is a, a kind of topic here also in the AWS networking where we discuss all those things. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Yes, yeah, Sandeep, are you working at the like, uh, WordPress side also working on the right? Now sections we are working on WordPress. 
wordpress you are saying yeah wordpress site is the right in our aws for creation of website wordpress you are saying it's a it's a kind of framework php based framework but uh, we do have different examples like it doesn't mean a, a particular yeah wordpress i can I'll, I'll also deal with it i'll show you creating a wordpress website in, and also yeah. involving the load balancers and how to scale the, how to scale the website yeah Okay, thanks. I, I teach everything so that you can also uh, do that in your uh, like uh, if at all if I, I don't teach something a service which does not fit into your free account. So my intention of this course would be if I teach you something you should be able to uh, like also go to your AWS console and create that and you can understand that. It's not that I pick up something there where you can't understand that or you can't uh, practice that. Yeah, and one more thing. Uh... Can we can we connect all these services right? Like how to connect VC2 to S3 on database? All this yeah, covered, right? Yeah, I'll cover all these things. That is what I was giving you this overview here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So I need to teach you how does you connect the RDS to the EC2 instance application? So, or how does oh, yeah. uh, you can connect the S3 and pull the data onto the EC2 instance? So that is how this will will go with learning. Like we can do a like a small website like how to connect this all the exactly. services. So three applications I'll go with that. One would be a normal one with involving the elastic load balancer and auto scaling and all this. This could be one application. Later with the serverless approach like Lambda and DynamoDB, we'll go with one application and with the containerization part. Like these days, this is very important. So if you want to uh, like we use this very very heavily. So you need to well create an application based on this also. Yeah, like all the applications were like like a layer type scenarios, right? Based on layer yeah. type scenarios. Yeah. What can working on companies? Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Sandeep. Thanks. That's it for me. So if it is done, then we can end the session. Okay. Yeah, thanks thank you, lot, Sandeep, for this for this wonderful demo, and uh, thanks to yeah. KRIT for this conducting AWS demo. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Everyone. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thanks, Sandeep. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone.